What do you want? Oh, when you when you think of Daniel, and I know you're friendly with the man, Daniel yep. Levy at Tottenham, uh, you've a, a long and a strong association with him. Um, it comes as, according to Deloitte's latest football money league, Tottenham have overtaken Chelsea to become the richest club in London. Thanks in part, you might guess, to, the, to, to their new stadium. Spurs have become the eighth richest club in the world. Real Madrid lead the way with annual revenues of about 550 million. While mm. Chelsea's club revenue have been reported as 512. If I hadn't told you before we went on air that they would be where they're at, would you have guessed it anyway? Um, not necessarily, because obviously if you've not had European football in that mix um, of any significance, then it would be difficult to see how you've generated those revenues. Obviously, they've got uns- they've got secondary spending there now with stadium concerts and their 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 attitude towards F and B food and banqueting about getting people in earlier and, and keeping them longer after games and generating more revenue. Yeah, it's an interesting characterization because the biggest turnover doesn't make you the richest. Because it's, if you've got five hundred and sixty-three million pound turnover and six hundred million pounds of wages, you're not the richest, right? You just have the biggest turnover. So it's an interesting characterization. But I'm not surprised. I'm not surprised because whatever people do and do not think about Daniel, the financial solidity and stability of Tottenham Hotspur is probably unquestionable, and so much so that they're able to build one billion pound stadiums. Whether they've got cheap money from 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 the government at the time for the from the COVID relief monies that they could have gotten, uh, or other initiatives that they could have gotten money from, is irrelevant. They still got to build a billion pound stadium. Yeah. Now it has to translate, because the question is going to be, and the question is framed in such a way. All this vilification. I was at games last year, and I saw Tottenham fans uh, very hateful and disrespectful towards Levy and 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 his and his direction of travel for the for the for the football club and that annoyed you well it doesn't annoy me because it goes with the territory you know that's what you've got you get west ham fans screaming and bitching and whining about their team being sick from the league because they don't like the standard of football it's the way football works you can't yeah. take emotion out of it you can't take a pain out of it you just got to get on with it yeah in this instance daniel still has to get this monkey off his back in terms of people being able to hit him with it which is forget the fact that you're economically secure forget the fact that you run a tight ship Win us bloody something. Mm. Now, the, the mm. Ange phenomenon is a great opportunity, not just to win something, but quite, it's quietened everything down because the, the Conti did, him, did him a, an absolute solid by being so bloody you know, disrespectful and divisive. He created a negative feel around the football club that Posta Coglu's positive outlook and style of play is just complete. Now, it's not Levy anymore, is it? I thought they were going to win anything this year. Probably not. Probably not. No. But the background yeah. noise is gone. And that's just how interesting you can change the, the dynamics of something yes. by giving it a different set of, for want of a better expression, optics. It's, it's impossible to disagree with you, Sam. But Levy's sustainable approach, and it was often perceived as lacking ambition uh, or not backing his manager. But it's come to the fore now, Simon, for various reasons, not least as FFP begins to bite for other clubs. Well, that's 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 the consequence of running your business in such a way or the upside of running your business in such a way. Some would say that's not hugely admirable because the consequences of it are that you haven't won anything. Other people like Sam Wallace would write on the Telegraph that maybe Joe Lewis has spent less time committing fraud in court and more time sticking that money into Tottenham Hotspur than they might have been able to win things. <laughs> I'll get to I, think that. that's, I think that's slightly mean-spirited. Yeah. But notwithstanding that, you look at it and say, Tottenham, Tottenham have had a go at times, but they've spent... Do you remember when they sold... Um, Gareth Bell and they took all that dough and they mm. gave it to AVB and he just went yeah and threw as much of it against the wall and they bought players that didn't work out for any of them and I I'm think that so. changed yeah. Daniel's perspective on certain things but you see look, look Simon as you're just finishing <laughs> your last sentence there's Jack Daniel Levy has run Tottenham Hotspur very well when it comes to business credit to him for that but football's about winning things and uh, we won a trophy 23 years ago was it the league cup no 15 years or ago. one trophy in 23 years he's yeah. saying it's simply not good enough football's about winning so there's another tottenham fan who in spite of what we're saying about tottenham's achievements regards to their new stadium and everything that goes with it isn't but, happening but, daniel but they, they well you know they have the right to say that but the tragedy of what football is about now is it isn't just about winning it's about money it's about business people owning football clubs and what those football clubs can do for business it's changed yeah you wanted it you wanted to have the best league in the world and people say well we didn't want it yes you did <laughs> and you want the best players and you want the best managers so then what happens is and you want people to come in and then to empty the contents of their wallets into business into football clubs and then you don't want it to be a business yeah now they should be they're absolutely right it's undeniable that they should be 
in the business of winning. And that is a failing. They've been close and they've missed opportunities. I think they've snatched defeat from the jaws of victory. Mm. I think they had a chance with Harry for a brief period of time. And I think they had a really significant chance uh, with Pochettino. Yeah. And they sh- they could and should have rivaled Leicester for that league, and that's not de- you know denying Le- league- Leicester's opportunity. They could and should have got an FA Cup semi finals out of the way and won FA Cups, and they could have turned up in a Champions League final, and then they could have right. economically had a go right. after the Champions League season, but for reasons of finances and running the football club in a way, and you, you, whether Tottenham fans like it or not, I, I quite admire the Daniels' absolute steadfast refusal to run it in any other way than he thinks is best for the club. Now, of course, at the end of the day, it gets dark, but at the end of the day, you've got to win things in football, otherwise you get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can have Nottingham Forest if you want. You can have Everton if you want. You can have Sheffield Wednesday. You can have Derby. You can have all these clubs that have been in the Premier League, and you can have that if you want. Sure. Or you can have... Manchester City, you can have people that win Premier Leagues that yeah. have got tainted reputations as a result of it. You can or, have a variety of things. Or you can want. be top of the shop when it comes to Deloitte's latest football money league. Tottenham overtaking Chelsea to become the richest club in London. And and that is thanks in part to their new stadium. It's inarguable what he's done, Simon, isn't it? In certain I, respects, I mean, yeah. 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 In certain in certain respects it is. But you know, he he's made decisions. And and I'm not speaking on behalf of him, but if you make the observation, if you make the decisions to bring Mourinho and Conti in there, it's not because you're not trying to win. And sure. then people will say, well, you didn't give them the tools. And then you give them the tools. I mean, Everton gave Carlo Ancelotti the tools and, 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 and other managers the tools. And where are they now? Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.